What's up traders, Sandra O'Connell with Pristine Capital coming at you with yet another market recap video. It is October 6th, 2021. Please go ahead, click that like button on this video, subscribe to this channel, really appreciate you. And today we're gonna talk about this crazy reversal day we had in the markets. I think there are a lot of days where all the price action is, you know, some of it can be noise, there's not really much signal in there. But then there are days where I think it's super important to listen to what the market is telling you. And I think today is one of those days. So we're going to talk all about that. Before we jump in, quick risk disclaimer, nothing in this video should be construed as investment advice or recommendations. Please follow your own trading plan and your own risk parameters. Last but certainly not least, do not YOLO your entire account to any one of my trades or anyone's trades for that matter. All right, so the indices team box scores here we had the s p 500 as measured by the spy close up 0.42 percent on the day we have the nasdaq qqq which was our big winner close up 0.64 percent iwm small caps closed down 0.52 percent our biggest loser on the session for the second day in a row and then the dow jones dogs of the dow were up 0.29 percent and we're we're actually going to look at what this uh what this little table looked like earlier in the day and you're gonna see like early in the day this was a bloodbath so we'll talk about that in a moment but the volatility got crushed into the close look at this for each index vol closed negative which is great to see because again you know the volatility was popping in the morning and then breadth look at this so we had positive breadth in three out of the four indices for the majority of the day that was not the case so we had 70% advancers in the queues, bit of a relief rally there. We had 67% advancers in the Dow, 56 in the SPY, and 34% in the small cap. So overall, this was a great picture. Let's take a look at what this heat map looked like a bit earlier in the session. Check this out. So this was a snapshot that I took uh, earlier in the day. Maybe this was around like 10, 30, 11. And this was not even the worst of it. But look at this. Intraday, SPY was down over a percent. Everything was down over a percent. The small caps, like I was talking to everybody in the pristine capital trading community. I even post this on Twitter. Like it seems like basically what happened was like there's a, been a ton of volatility over the past five weeks. And what I've been noticing over the past maybe like four or five days, you get to a point where the market stops going down but you just have all this chop. And to me, what that is typically is like, there's a lot of these players that, you know, we've been in a downtrend for five weeks. There's a lot that they just remain bullish the entire time. You know, they were defiant about it. And basically at the very end of the down sequence, that's when they start getting their margin calls. You know, that's when they get the tap on the shoulder from their risk manager saying, hey, you gotta take this risk down. You know, this is not going your way. So at the end of a down sequence, you get a lot of weak hands that are forced into action. They have to sell at these lower prices, but then you start to see strong hands basically taking advantage of them and kind of keeping the market pinned at a certain level where it's like, we're not gonna go crazy buying because we're not gonna relieve you of your pain, but we'll keep letting the market fall into these support levels and we'll just scoop up your shares at support. In the small caps, it looked like there was an extinction event going on today. This thing was down over 2% at one point. And, you know, luckily all these indices, the breadth was on the floor in the morning. There were no advancers, 0% in the Dow, for instance. And the vol just exploded to the upside. And we ended up here with, you know, just like a, a beautiful picture basically into the close. So this you know definitely went the happy path had every reason to not go down the happy path but it worked out and then finvis heat map you know this thing was bloody 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 on the open closed not bad you know looks pretty solid overall a lot of these mega cap tech names they are having their bounces so let's take a look at a couple of those we'll check out we'll check out microsoft Nice action today for Microsoft actually curling higher and we're approaching these key moving averages. I think the real distinction is what's gonna happen with these names once they hit into, for instance, this monthly value area low. I think even though they're getting these really nice relief balances, 
I still think that heading into 2022, you know, these are not going to be the best places to have your capital. I mean, maybe the Microsofts, the Googles, those kinds of names will still be good because they are literally the best of the best. But I think mega cap tech is not really where you're going to want to be. But this definitely was, you know, the relief bounce. And it's always so obvious in hindsight. Look, we had five days in a row where this thing was not like it wasn't making new lows. This is the dynamic that I'm talking about where all these weak hands just have to get out. You know, they just got to give up these shares. And then you get other players that go, hey, I'll buy your Microsoft for 281. I'll buy your Microsoft for 281. Yeah, I'll buy it again for 281. But they're not interested because they know all these players are leaning the wrong way in buying it at overbought prices. But now we just got the breakout from this range. So that is Microsoft. We have Google as well. Google, nice little bounce, curling higher. Facebook even, let's see what Facebook did. This one's been the weakest of the week. Yeah, this one couldn't even really manage a bounce. Only up 0.2%. We have Apple. Yeah, this one had a little bounce, it's in value. So yeah, you can see a lot of these growth names got their bounces today. Let's take a look at the overall headline indices. I'm gonna try to go through this quick so I can go for my run. S&P 500, boom! So I actually bought some calls into the close team because we've been in this downward trend channel for five weeks. You know, two more days roll by once we're done and that'll be on week six. The coronavirus crash took six weeks. So yeah, we've been in here for a while. We just broke out of the downward trend channel team. So look at the last four days of trading. It was like we tested above it and failed. 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 And on the fifth try, we tested above and we did not fail. <laughs> so to me, that's, that's a good indication that, hey, something different is happening. And also, you know, we've been in this pattern. I drew these red lines going across where we've just been having inside day after inside day. And oh my gosh, I just realized this was another inside day. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Yeah, so literally, yeah, this is super exciting. I still think this is a great candle because this is literally a bullish hammer candle. This, this candle looks really good, but yeah, still an inside day. What I'm looking for tomorrow is to break out of this range. So not only did we successfully break the downward trend channel, but we managed to close inside of value. So I love that. If we can sustain in here tomorrow, that's just a good sign that, you know, who knows, maybe we can test this 20 day simple moving average. We still have work to do. We're not above the key moving averages, but I think a test of the 20 day looks a lot more likely now. So I ended up picking up, let me just, uh, go into this since we're already on this index. So these these were my trades for the day. I didn't do a lot of trading. October 6th. Da -da -da. There it is. Yeah, so I day traded Netflix today and I got like a little scalp winner. I put this on at 943, closed it out towards the end of the session, made about you know 33 cents on this, nothing crazy. And then I got long the SPY October 15th, 434 calls for $5.03. And I got a nice trade location on this. Once I saw that, you know, we had every reason to close on the lows and just wash everyone out. Even in our trading community, today was the first day where, you know, all of us as a group were like, geez, we're tired. Like this is, you know, getting crazy. So I wasn't going to say it. But I know typically that's the way that it works. Like the market's just insane how it works that way that once you feel like I'm ready to just give up, like it's over, I'm done. That's when the market typically, you know, once it's hit your max pain point, then it will typically reverse. So I think today's the first day in a while where it's like, I think this was a really constructive day of price action for all those reasons we just went through. So yeah, S&P 500 looking good. Uh, NASDAQ really stealing the show. So let's talk about that one. Yeah, this is a nice day. So I think the good thing, you know, for the S&P 500 as well, 
is we closed above the five day exponential moving average. And of course that's like, you know, who cares? Just the five day EMA, but baby steps. The last time we closed above the five day EMA was you can see right here on this bounce, you know, we closed pretty much right on it and right here. Um, so this is, Hey, you know, a nice hammer candle on high volume. We're above the five day EMA. Could the NASDAQ make a run at this monthly value where you're low? It's possible. But my expectations for the NASDAQ are a bit lower than they are for the rest of these indices, just because we have the Fed taper coming up. We have, uh, you know, potentially rates rising. So that's another reason why I lost my train of thought there. Um, so yeah, NASDAQ, this is the one that I think could fool people where I'm sure everyone today is like, oh my gosh, I got back into my data dog. I got back into my Cloudflare, my Roku. Let's see, because these like Roku, for instance, had a nice bounce. It's above that 20 day simple moving average. Keep in mind, it's done this several times. I think Roku is probably the best of the best in terms of these growth names that are just completely washed out over the course of these two months. So I'll probably be watching this one specifically. Might even add this one to the long term portfolio. But I think a lot of these names, maybe ones that haven't washed out so much, I think these growth names are still kind of, you know, Maybe while they're on the lows, you can scoop them up, but I definitely would not be chasing growth stocks, but that's just me personally. Small caps. So the small caps, really odd. These things really betrayed me over the past two days, team. So small caps have been showing relative strength the entire downtrend. Like the small caps didn't even make lower lows at any point during this. And, you know, really just stayed in their consolidation range. To me, it seems like there was some sort of extinction event, like I said earlier, going on because we had strength in the small caps yesterday and on a dime, the strength was sold. It was like randomly, oh my gosh, we're flying. We're up like one, one percent and change. And then it was just like, boom, boom, boom. Sellers came right in and just auctioned it lower. And when I saw that, I was like, it's not really the best sign for tomorrow. And sure enough, you know, we just got this really bad candle in the morning we were down almost two percent on the small caps they're showing a real weakness below this uh, monthly value area low and we can see you know these small caps are getting bid up even after hours so the small caps were still below the key moving averages uh but we made it back inside value and what i think is interesting about the small caps you know i'm very overweight the small caps right now and i do have some options that are expiring October 15th. So I have a couple of positions that are on the bubble team. But I think with these, it's like it can really swing either way because we have one, you know, one, two, three, four, five. This is basically day six of range bound price action. All it's really going to take to the upside or downside, it could literally be one candle that just pushes us outside of this range completely to the upside or the downside so if it's like oh we're testing the low end of the range or we're testing the high end of the range it's really about you know which way we end up breaking out so with these small caps day two of relative weakness but i'm giving them the benefit of the doubt because they've been showing relative strength for literally you know five weeks so we'll see i think the nasdaq is just having its little like catch-up sequence but i think Small caps are going to be a good spot for Q4. And then we have the Dow Jones dogs of the Dow. Let's see how we're doing on time. Okay, let's hustle up. We got Dow Jones. Nice. A pretty good test of this 20 day simple moving average. So the Dow actually looks pretty good also. So that's the thing. I think people will get caught up in the NASDAQ bounce because it's like, oh my gosh, it was the strongest one today. Like, this is awesome. They're going to chase it. Like, say if we get a gap up tomorrow, that's probably when most people are going to chase the NASDAQ. Whereas something like the Dow Jones, hey, the Dow Jones, all we need is a little bit of a pop. This thing's over the 20 day simple moving average. And this thing's trading inside of value. Whereas the NASDAQ is nowhere near value. You see what I mean? So yeah, I think the Dow Jones could be a nice sleeper into Q4, but those are all the headline indices. Overall, all of them, I think, are looking much healthier than they were even yesterday. And I think it's awesome. We can see the VVIX. It's going back to, you know, S&P 500 vol. VVIX closed towards the lows, which is good. 
And the VIX, let's see where that closed. Only closed down 1.41%. So it's not like we're out of the woods. We're still above a 21, but great thing that happened. I'm going to talk about this more. I'm doing another live stream with Juicy Trades. This guy, he's so awesome. He's got like 16, 17K followers. Really nice guy. You know, we've done some Twitter spaces together and we just started chatting and talking, whatever. And he's like, yeah, man, you want to go live with me? It'll be a lot of fun, whatever. So they're really like my first live streams. And yeah, he's like really gracious in having me on, you know, his his network or whatever. So we're going to talk about the debt ceiling. Basically, in a nutshell, the Republicans said, hey, we can do an extension on this debt ceiling. Basically, we can kick it, kick the can down the road a little bit, which is great because you know, foreign investors started to price in higher probabilities of default for the United States. And that's a big tail risk in the market. That, hey, you know, the United States, we might not uh, make it through this uh, debt ceiling increase. We might actually default on our debt. So that was actually the catalyst for this. Probably should have said that first. But yeah, once we got that news headline, I was like, let's go. So the, yeah, the indices, they just started running. So we'll see, like I would expect there's gonna be follow through tomorrow because that's a big risk that's coming off the plate, at least temporarily, you know, a good, a good sign. Okay, so we have those bunch of names looking pretty solid. Uh, DigitalOcean, this one, I have a long position in here. This uh, cloud name that got beaten up with the other cloud names, but this one is trading at a really good valuation. We have Digital Turbine did not exactly close on the highs. But nonetheless, behaving very well. Look at this. I think Digital Turbine is going to make new highs pretty soon. So we'll see. And then, of course, how can we forget? We have our cryptos, ladies and gentlemen, Bitcoin. Dun, dun, dun. Look at this. Bitcoin up 6.73%. We're trading at 55K. So for everyone that's been in these cryptos with me, you can replay my videos from months and months ago back in here. This is where I was buying crypto in this downtrend. And basically I was saying like, I don't know why anybody would be anywhere else other than crypto. Like this is insane. And I started accumulating here and yeah, it's been, it's been a nice ride higher. So yeah, Bitcoin had its weakness in September and yeah, now we just got this nice push up. I would imagine there's going to be some headlines coming out in the near future it seems like something is going on here like why is this just popping but you know i'll take it and now we're within striking distance of the prior highs bitcoin and cryptocurrency it is such a momentum asset that once we take out those all-time highs it's basically game over that's when this thing just turns into a big momentum run so yeah i really like what bitcoin is doing ethereum as well um, ethereum i'm actually more overweight than bitcoin and this one having some nice price action as well, but it's pretty clear to me that Bitcoin is leading. But in actuality, it's really not. Now that I think about it, because look, it's leading the past couple days, but it's really not leading. Because uh, check this out. So Ethereum, very close to the prior all-time highs. You know, you can see there's barely any underwater investors in Ethereum. And this is all time, literally there's whoever bought in these like six days over here is underwater and whoever bought in these like six days so out of like the years that ethereum has been around there's maybe like 12 days of investors that are underwater so that's why i think the path of least resistance like it's becoming a more high probability trade the higher it's going with bitcoin you know we're basically in the same boat where we have you know more days of investors that are underwater for sure but still you know with how long bitcoin has been around basically everyone that's ever purchased bitcoin is making money unless you happen to purchase literally in this like three week three month span you know everyone's had a good experience with it so yeah i think these you know they're just awesome so we have the cryptos uh we already talked about my trades for the day because i barely did any so yeah, looking for some more upside and spy tomorrow. And let's take a quick look. What time is it? We got one minute left. So let's just take a look at our Tradescape. Look at our Vigtech. 
This video is sponsored by VicTech. No, it's actually not. I don't have a VicTech sponsorship. I do have an affiliate agreement with them. I am gonna post my link in the description. I do that every day. If you're interested in VicTech, these guys, great product and a really, just a good team, good guys. So let's see. What do we got? Spy, Tesla, Amazon, QQQ. Okay, so Affirm, let's talk about this name. Affirm, I'm long in the long-term portfolio. Let's check it out. I added that one in maybe like on the last rebalance, like a week and a half ago, two weeks ago. Affirm, oh my gosh, it closed at a new high. Oh my God, look at this. So Affirm up 20%, Jesus Christ. And this one, it got taken down in the sell-off, but it's very clear that, you know, some big investors just came in and they were like, all right, let's allocate risk. All right, we're going with Affirm. You know, this one, looks really strong and this is very similar to like a bitcoin or ethereum where there's very few investors in here that are underwater now look really only if you purchase something like that one or really like this three or four day span right here so this name as it approaches those highs that's really where the bull run could start in this one so a firm just looks fantastic you know whoever caught this uh, you know, on the lows, definitely congratulations. So yeah, firm looking awesome. We're gonna leave it off there because it's very tough to follow up on anything else. Thank you so much for watching the video tonight. Again, I'm gonna be live streaming with Juicy Trades. We're going on at eight o'clock. I'm gonna post it out on Twitter a little bit later. Appreciate you all and I will see you all tomorrow.